Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning. We thank you so much for coming our way. We have some visitors and we very much appreciate you being here. Uh, if you haven't grabbed one, there's a little pamphlet that tells a little bit of what we're about. And we're striving to serve God the way that he has set forth in his word and nothing more, nothing less than that. If you ever have a Bible question, desire a study, please let that be known and we'll do our best to, to make arrangements for that. Uh, we're going to go over a few announcements and then we'll go over the order of services. Uh, this morning after services, there'll be a privilege to serve a uh, work group meeting in the side classroom. If you'd like to attend that. Uh, those in need of our prayers, continue to pray for our brother Jeff Shane as he has cancer. Uh, Sister Nancy Morse has been moved to the Valley Haven Nursing Home. Betty Isinghood, as she's battling with cancer in her lung and shoulder. Carol's husband with his leaky valve. And Maggie McGowan, as she's battling breast cancer. Those who were shut in at home, uh, Mary Science, Roberta Gilday, and also uh, Sister Janie and Fox, who is at Valley Haven Nursing Home as well. Uh, requested prayers on behalf of Aaron Fleener. I guess he's been sick. He's lost about 15 pounds, has been really dehydrated, so please remember him. And I'm told that uh, Crystal Wallace's son, Warren, is not feeling well this morning. Is there anything else that needs to be announced at this time, guys? Okay, nothing new. Then we'll go over the order of services. Uh, when I step down, opening prayer will be by <coughs> Brother Danny Roberts, song leader Dwight Minor. Scripture reading will be taken from Romans 15, verses 1 through 13, and that will be done by <coughs> Brother Eric Freeland. Lord's Supper will be waited on by Les McGowan. And Dan Rug, assisted by Danny Roberts and Ed Roberts, in closing prayer by Nathan Marshall. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before thee. Thank you, thank you for this gracious day you've given us to come together as Christians and learn and study in thy word. Also, dear Lord, be with those who are serving today, and guide and guard and direct them and give them strength. Also, dear Lord, be with our brother Dan as he gives our sermon, that he's been prepared, and that he will guide us in, in, the, God's, uh, in, the, Lord's, uh, in the Lord's gospel and continue his uh, hard work that he does do. And please, Lord, do be with those who are sick and afflicted and guide them to the better health. In uh, Jesus' name, amen. Number 538, Majesty. The honor of the Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and, ma and the majesty. First Chronicles 29, 11. Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, power, and praise. Majesty, Kingdom authority flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem raise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty. Worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. The next song will be number 97. 97, if you're willing and able, please stand. O to be like thee, but we all, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image for from glory to glory, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. <coughs> oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures, Jesus thy perfect likeness to wear. 
to be like Thee, all to be like Thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as Thou art. Come in Thy sweetness, come in Thy fullness, stamp Thine own image deep on my heart. All to be like Thee, Passion, loving, forgiving, tender and kind, helping the helpless, cheering the painting, seeking the wandering sinner to find. All oh, to be like thee, all oh, to be like thee, blessed. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, lowly and spirit, holy and harmless, patient and brave, meekly Willing to suffer, others to save. Oh, to be like Thee, oh, to be like Thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as Thou art. Come in Thy sweetness, come in Thy fullness, stamp Thine earnest. To be like Thee, Lord, I am coming now to receive the anointing divine. All that I am and have I am bringing, Lord, from this moment all shall be Thine. Oh, to be like Thee. All to be like Thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as Thou art. Come in Thy sweetness, come in Thy fullness, stamp Thine own image deep on my heart. Please be seated. Scripture reading this morning will be from the book of Romans, chapter 15, the first 13 verses. Romans chapter 15, beginning with verse 1. Now we who are strong ought to bear the weakness of those without strength and not just please ourselves. Each of us to please his neighbor for his good to his edification. For even Christ did not please himself but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Jesus Christ so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept one another, just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promise given to the fathers. And for the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy at his written, Therefore, I will give praise to you among the Gentiles, and I will sing to your name. Again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. 
Again, Isaiah says, Therefore shall come the root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Good to be together here this morning. Grateful to be back. Uh, grateful for everyone that was able to uh, fill in during my absence um, during the preaching and the teaching. I appreciate that so very much. And uh, grateful uh, to be back together again and uh, looking forward uh, to um, the blessing of just being together and the Lord and uh, the blessing of coming to the, the kingdom and coming to the King who loved us, who shed his blood for us, and encourages us that we might um, emulate him every day, and, and what a blessing that we can be together and see how we can be more, more like him uh, as we seek to draw closer to him and, and embrace the work uh, that he has given us to do. And I uh, want to just uh, focus a little bit here uh, this morning on a proverb, proverb chapter 14. Um, as we uh, spent our time in, in Worcester, uh, they were, it, were engaging in a gospel meeting. And uh, anytime I, I have the, the opportunity to uh, work in that effort, usually uh, every evening, I'm, I'm usually focusing intently on just uh, what would be uh, ho hopefully a helpful sermon just on the gospel. And uh, so I spent a lot of time uh, just preaching the gospel, thinking about, uh, results of the gospel, hoping that we would uh, see uh, uh, responses to the gospel. And uh, as I thought about that and thought about um, uh, the work that, that, that we were doing there together and the work that we do here in, in Wellsburg, thought about this, uh, this interesting visual uh, in Proverbs chapter 14. It's in verse 4, and we're just going to focus on that here this morning it says where no oxen are the manger is clean but much revenue comes by the strength of the ox kind of an interesting thought uh really the the idea is that isn't it true how sometimes uh uh we may uh see the benefit of, of a tool the benefit of implementing something that uh, that would uh, uh, make life productive, make uh, thing, make make us go a little bit further. Uh, obviously, the, in uh, farming communities, uh, obviously oxen uh, provide a whole lot of uh, benefits. They provide strength that human beings can't do on their own. That's the blessing of having an animal that size, that magnitude, and be able to uh, do a lot of uh, the pulling and the treading and all the kinds of interesting things that uh, that are needed to. Um, be productive. But on one hand, some people may have the, well, I, I don't know that I want the, the, the problems that come with an ox. You know, my barn's going to be all dirty and all the, all the stuff comes with keeping that thing clean. Uh, I, I know myself, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know much about farming. I, I grew up in the city in North Canton, Ohio. <laughs> Actually, Worcester, Ohio is not far from uh, where we were, where I grew up. And uh, I remember one time I, I was in Cameron, Ohio, and uh, stayed uh, with a family. They were dairy farmers. And I remember one, one evening I said, I, I want you to wake me up when you guys wake up. I want to know what a day uh, uh, on the farm is like. Give, 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 give me an idea of what that's like. See, if, see, see what that, would, that uh, experience would be like. Uh, I remember the one thing that stood out was I remember as I got about 20 feet away from the barn <laughs> and the s smell <laughs> almost knocked me over. And I remember seeing uh, the guy that was with him, he just walked right in, he's taking deep breaths, he's just shoveling, how oh, in the world <laughs> could you be able to do that? Uh, it would have taken me quite a while <laughs> to get accustomed to something like that. Uh, but obviously, 
There were a lot of chores that came in with that barn and all the animals that they kept in that barn. But the reason that they were willing to do all that was because of the benefits they got. It was worth it. It was worth it to have the extra chores to clean up and uh, uh, have a little bit of uh, discomfort <laughs> with that. And uh, imagine someone with my city boy knowledge would say, you know what, you know, we don't need all that. You know, watch me try to push something or try to do something that an ox or a cow's supposed to do. <laughs> and how foolish that would be. And that's kind of the point. Is imagine how many, how many things we, we lack success with. How many opportunities we lack uh, the opportunity to move a bit forward because we don't implement something because, well, it's just going to cause more of a mess. And the cleanup and everything else is just too much. So avoid all that. We'll just make it easier. And, and, and it's tempting to do it that way, uh, but sometimes just easier does not always mean better. Sometimes we implement uh, avenues of work that will create additional chores, will create additional jobs, will create additional work and effort, but isn't it not worth it in the long run? Isn't it worth the extra effort, the extra chores, the extra uh, maybe difficulty if we see ourselves moving forward? And, and I wonder sometimes how maybe this could be even applied in the realm of, of preaching or the gospel, spreading the gospel, efforts being made to, to preach the gospel. Because if we're going to do the work of preaching the gospel, we're basically told, go into a messy world. That's where we're told to go. Go into a messy world. And go into that messy world and bring that mess to Jesus. And guess what? If we're here together assembling to worship Jesus... We're essentially inviting uh, messy lives, uh, 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 troubled souls, additional uh, 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 strife and, 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 and sorrow and difficulty that people bring with them. And because of the things that, uh, that, that have brought them down and discouraged them and dis dismantled the peace in their lives. And, and isn't it interesting how sometimes maybe the mentality is, well, well we want to keep a nice, pleasant uh, a clean church, and so uh, rather than go out into the messy world, uh, we don't want to bring all that kinds of mess around because you know we have all kinds of additional problems and additional things going on. Well, that's just additional work uh, that that j just uh, could be very, uh, in some minds, distracting. And and uh, I just want to come here and I just want to be able to have the peace of just worshiping God and just thinking of all the peaceful blessings that I have when I worship him together. And, it, and, and you know, if we go out and we, we, we implement some, some serious evangelistic efforts, that's just going to bring more mess, right? <laughs> what kind of wisdom is, is in that? I think sometimes maybe that's the mentality. Maybe the reason why sometimes maybe real uh, hard, concentrated evangelistic efforts sometimes maybe, maybe go unnoticed or, or, or aren't implemented, maybe sometimes because we recognize, well, that's attracting and that's bringing a whole host of individuals that are living in this sinful world. And isn't that just mean just uh, additional situations and additional issues? But yet when we read the scriptures, we read that's exactly what Jesus intended, and that's exactly what Jesus wanted, and that's exactly what preaching the gospel does. Preaching the gospel is attracting individuals who are in the midst of a mess in their lives. And the gospel message is, is to provide hope for individuals who are trapped, who are stuck, who are overburdened with, yes, sin and issues, and guess what? If we are going to, to be successful in bringing that message out and bringing individuals in, guess what? That means a whole host of opportunity, yes, opportunity for us to be involved in being the hands that Jesus wants to administer his grace and administer his teaching and administer his serving to help individuals that need that. What a blessing that is. And, 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 and I think this is a, a, an interesting parable because I think sometimes it speaks to that. And, and I, 
it's interesting how maybe sometimes if we don't look at it the right way, we can very easily miss opportunities to put our shoulder to the work, put our hands to the work of, uh, of making sure the gospel is spread and, and, and making sure that we are ready to handle and willing to handle the overflow of what sin has done to people's lives and have the attitude of what a blessing it is to put our hands to the work of making sure Jesus is doing that work of, of, of bringing his salvation and the blood that he shed. And what a messy, messy act of sacrifice that was. Sometimes I, I, I think it's good for us maybe to look at this parable in this way, realizing that sometimes the things that, 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 that aren't uh, squeaky clean or maybe just, uh, 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 just uh, the most pleasant things uh, to, to engage in, well, that's, that's what the gospel is encouraging us to do is to get our hands dirty and to recognize that it is a blessing when we see those kinds of additional issues and those kinds of things because that means the Lord is working, the gospel is having an effect, and we get to the opportunity and the, the, the blessing of being able to see Hope administered, troubled souls being brought peace, and restoration being given to their lives. And that's not going to be clean. It's going to be messy. Individuals recognizing the, 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 the trials, the, the troubles. And is the mentality, well, I, I just don't want to, I just don't want to deal with that. I, I, I just don't know. We need to be having all kinds of those doors opened and have real problems spilled out on the floor. Have real, real situations that individuals are struggling and, 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 and need help from others to, to help them as they uh, grow to be strengthened that they might be able to be strengthened to help somebody else. It's a messy work. And that's what the, that proverb is saying, is saying how many times we miss opportunity to move forward, progress even further, because we don't want to get our hands dirty with additional responsibility but notice in in first thessalonians so many passages of scripture and so many instances where paul gave us a, a window into what was happening when individuals were responding to the preaching of the gospel and and i and i love the attitude he gives in first thessalonians because in first thessalonians chapter one paul gives us a very real yes a messy scenario he talks about individuals that were responding to the gospel previously were idolatrous worshipers that was their culture that was their way of life that was their their custom and in idolatrous worship there was a whole host of other destructive things that sin had brought into their life that undoubtedly they weren't just going to be unraveled the minute they became baptized that Paul was going to be offering further additional teaching and encouraging others to help bring them out of the sin that they were in and help them grow closer to the Lord. But notice the attitude that Paul has. Paul says, I'm thankful. I'm thankful about the situation you were in when you came to the gospel, when you responded. To I'm thankful that it was a, a, a kind of a chaotic situation in your life. It wasn't, a, it wasn't just a Cornelius situation. I think sometimes maybe that, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a Cornelius. It doesn't seem like, well, there's a whole lot of things he had to change in his life. He just needs to obey the gospel, just get in the right church. <laughs> he seems like a pretty decent, good guy. <laughs> Listen to the kinds of people Paul dealt with coming to the gospel and his attitude. He says, I'm thankful. I'm thankful about you. First Thessalonians chapter one, beginning in verse, in verse six, 
he says, you also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves report about us what kind of a reception we had with you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead. That is Jesus who rescues us from the wrath to come. He talks about this, but notice his attitude in verse 2. This is the description of the people. This is what they came from. And if you knew in those days, but if you were heavy into idolatry, well, sexual immorality, all kinds of, of immoral, sinful activity associated with that, And these are the individuals with their baggage, with their issues, with all the, the corruption that was in their mind as they decided they, knew, they wanted to change their life and they wanted to respond to a new way of living. And these are the individuals showing up and assembling themselves to the brethren at Thessalonica. And Paul says this in verse 2, we are thankful. We give thanks to God for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, constantly bearing in mind your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of God our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved by God, his choice of you. And as we continue reading in Thessalonians, it's interesting if we go down to chapter 2 and listen to the way Paul describes, because as any one of us could imagine... Uh, this would have been a, an intense level of labor because there were a whole host of issues and, 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 and doctrines and teachings and, and behavior that they're going to have to be strengthened to overcome. And listen to how Paul describes what that process was like. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain, but after we had already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the boldness in our God to speak to you the gospel of God amid much opposition. For our exhortation does not come from error or impurity or by way of deceit, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who examines our hearts. For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed, God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though as apostles of Christ we might have asserted our authority. But we proved to be gentle among you, as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. There was a very patient, gentle way of handling these people. That's typically what you have to do when you have people that are coming from extreme <laughs> different contexts and extremely different places of, of their familiarity. It wasn't harshness. Well, now that you're a Christian, you better... I'm going to tell you, that, 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 we, we, we have a ship-shaped kind of place where you have <laughs> a clean kind of uh, environment here. Now, these are people that were bringing their sinful tendencies and were bringing their sinful habits and were bringing all of the things that the gospel is still trying to wrestle against and, and maneuver and help. And he says, we treated you the way a mother treats her children. Lovingly, acceptingly, gently. Just as we know, as we... Try to teach our children nothing, nothing sticks to them instantaneously. <laughs> it is a continual reminder. Why did you mess the bathroom up again? <laughs> Can you not go in, get a bath, come? <laughs> What's all this water on the floor? <laughs> 
right? We understand. Teaching difficult concepts to individuals that aren't prone to just naturally act that way is a labor of love. (laughs) And parents do it that way. This is what is required of individuals coming out of the messy, sinful world when they are added to the congregation, added to the Lord's body through baptism, there is still a labor of love that is required. And Paul says, we, ju- we rejoiced at the opportunity to do this with you. He said, he said the Lord examine our hearts and, and, and judge us. Notice it says in verse 8, verse 8, I love this, having so fond an affection for you. Yes. Affection for you. Turn to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. This is a a very, a very, I would probably say mild description of what typically you're going to find when you find anybody who worshiped idols. This is just a a mild kind of little foretaste of what typically the kind of people you're talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, because they also came from idols. What does it say? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. In other words, they changed. How? Paul gets a little bit more specific in 1 Thessalonians. He says, it was a labor of love and required much affection for you. Affection, recognizing this is an opportunity to teach. Notice verse 9. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 9 says, For you recall, brethren, our labor and hardship. It wasn't easy. No. Helping individuals coming out of their sin is not easy. It takes time. It takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of Bible study. It takes a lot of developing strong relationships, investing in these kinds of things. And that's how Paul describes this. Kind of like what we just read in Proverbs chapter 14, doesn't it sound? There was extra additional hardship. It was additional things that we, that we were uh, going to deal with. Now, if you don't want that, then just don't evangelize. If that's not, if that's not what we're up with, then by all means, don't preach the gospel. But if we are going to obey the commission to go out into the world, this is the reality we need to accept and be prepared and have the right attitude about this. And sometimes the mindset is just, well, we'll do this and we'll do that. And then poof, uh, transformed individuals who serve God and have no problems in their life. No. No. Read this. <laughs> That's not how it happened. Not even close. First lesson is chapter 2. Notice again verse 9. First lesson is 2 verse 9. For you we call, brethren, our labor and hardship, how working night and day so as not to be a burden to any of you. We proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and so is God how devoutly and uprightly and blamelessly we behave toward you believers just as you know how we were exhorting and encouraging and imploring, no, no, just the, 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 those three exi- defi- uh, <laughs> statements. <laughs> that sounds a little bit more than just, well, you heard, you heard the lesson. It sounds a, a, a little bit more than, well, here, here's the link to the, to the sermon. They were imploring. <laughs> They were got down to the nitty gritty. They understood the things that kept them from moving forward. They understood what kind of specific things in their lives were, 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 they were wrestling with. And they had such affection and, 
and, and compassion for it. They knew exactly what to speak about and they worked tirelessly, he says. He says, so as not to be a burden to you, but we wanted to make sure we were always available so that we could try to help you move forward. Exhorting, encouraging, and imploring. As a father would his own children. To do what? Verse 12. So that you would walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And that's the question. When we say, let's, let's preach the gospel, are we willing to work? Are we willing to work with the other additional issues that undoubtedly will pop up and require exhorting, imploring, and encouraging? Get our hands dirty. Notice in, in the Gospel of Luke, this is the, the big difference between the, the, the Pharisees and the method of Jesus himself. The Pharisees constantly over and over again said, we don't understand why in the world you want to spend so much time with people who, who have obvious sin in their life. In Luke chapter 5, notice... In verse 27, it says, After that, he went out and noticed a tax collector named Levi sitting in a tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he left everything behind and got up and began to follow him. And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, and there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? In short, Paul gives the, the detailed answer. Why? Because I'm dealing with them as a father with his children. Because I'm exhorting and I'm imploring and I'm encouraging. I'm not harshly just saying, okay, here's the door to eternal life. Here's the door to destruction. It's up to you now. He, he said it required a little, a little bit more than that. And this requires us to get close to them. And he notice he says in verse 31, he says, And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So what a blessing really it is. It is it's a blessing. It is a joy. When we have that privilege of, yes, getting closer having those who are opening up their minds, opening up their thoughts, opening up their hearts to the teachings of the gospel and our ability to uh, be able to, uh, with the teachings of scripture and, and with our love and with our encouragement, to implore, to encourage, to exhort, to keep pressing forward and leave those issues of sin. And what a blessing when we as brothers and sisters get to do that. And, and it is a joy, as Paul said, to be able to. Something else that certainly is going to bring a little bit of a mess at times is what we looked at in Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Notice again, there is going to be inevitably that messy situation of just a lot of uh, ideas and, and thoughts that aren't exactly spiritually correct, but they're, they need to learn. And there's going to be time when maybe that maybe feels a little messy, feels a little bit that it's just not jiving and, and, and connecting together with everyone else's position and everybody else's understanding. But even Paul mentions how there was a period of grace and patience with individuals who undoubtedly are going to bring a lot of baggage and bring a lot of uh, their own personal ideas. And, and we need to patiently uh, help, teach, and encourage, but also recognizing there's going to be a lot of differences of, uh, of how they, they personally are, are applying Scripture in their life. Some of it is going to be okay. Some of it not going to be okay. And us, again, having the same mentality of patient guidance and, and love to help 
Turn to Romans chapter 15, and this was the attitude that Paul had when he dealt with individuals who were going to come and bring a lot of, again, baggage, a lot of messiness and understanding. And here's how he encouraged them to deal with that. Romans chapter 15 and verse 1. He says, now we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not just please ourselves. Each of us is to please his neighbor for his good, to his edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, those who are stronger, those who have deeper understanding, those who have a more fine-tuned, uh, precise way of applying Scripture to their life in a way that, that mirrors how Christ would want us to, must patiently bear up under the, the weaknesses of those who don't understand it that way, who initially will have a very different way of, of how they're walking. But prayerfully, again, through our interaction and through our encouragement can help see progress being made. And again, we need to recognize it again. That will, that will be a messy situation. And again, I think back to that, that proverb again, but what a blessing. Because that additional uh, uh, effort, that additional uh, level of teaching only means we're moving forward. <laughs> only means we're making progress. Things, things are going the way that God wants us to, and creating all these other additional side requirements of, of, of guidance, encouragement, listening, praying, helping, studying, is all part of that process. And what a joy when we see those things happening. And one other area that, again, undoubtedly will maybe uh, create a, a level of discomfort at times is, again, remember the gospel is for all to go into all the world means we're going to be tapping into different cultures and uh, different uh, backgrounds that may be very different from our own. And recognizing the, the, the difficulty of that, but, but, but welcoming that, welcoming the diversity, welcoming that when, whoever it is, whenever what their background is, no matter uh, what their uh, uh, just uh, cultural norms are, as different as they may be to our own, need to be willing to make room for that. Remember, that's exactly what Jesus demonstrated in the Gospel of John with the woman that he was speaking to. Jesus was already trying to train his disciples to get used to having, yes, a Samaritan woman in regular conversations. No doubt she, she didn't understand why Jesus would talk to her. And no doubt the disciples, no doubt, were going to have a little bit of a level of discomfort, a little bit of that messy situation. How do, how do we transition into this? But the fact that that was going to be an issue means that progress was being made. It meant that, again, people were coming and bringing their baggage and bringing their issues and bringing their cultural differences. And that's a good thing. That's a necessary part of more people coming together to learn of the Lord. But notice it says there in John chapter 4, beginning in verse 7, it says, There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink? Since I am a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. In fact, verse 27, Jesus went ahead and, and, and made sure his disciples were aware of this so that they could also have the proper expectation. I expect you to be open to differences, cultural background and things. And as challenging as that's going to be, that means this is, this is good because more people are showing interest. This says there in verse 27, John 4, 27, at this point, his disciples came and they were amazed that he had been speaking with a woman. 
Yet no one said, what do you seek or why do you speak with her? So the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things that I've done. This is not the Christ, is it? They went out of the city and were coming to him. And just very quickly, that's just, uh, just a brief summation, just a, a wide variety of things. And just, I thought, listening to that, that parable, just so, it's just such an interesting visual, but seemed to be so fitting that uh, when we see the great work and the great progress that pushing forth the gospel does and the response of individuals coming and hearing, and when it seems like, well, maybe it, with that response comes, it seems like maybe the, 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 there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, additional work, additional things that maybe challenge us and, and, and maybe make things not as seamless and, and, and maybe a struggle to keep things together. Those are all good things. I mean, the good way to be reminded that, that as we will be challenged with those things, again, challenging backgrounds, uh, challenging messes that individuals have have uh, come to the Lord to try to find that healing and find that teaching and find that encouragement. Paul, again, I love his response. He said, we, we were happy to teach you just as a father or a mother would their own young child and would be patiently along the way helping you grow. And just as um, we're going to have differences of, of thoughts, what a, what a joy for us in our Bible classes. And in our individual Bible discussions, to, to patiently bear up under those weaknesses. And, and in time and, and in further discussion can help people get more fine-tuned where they are. And, and of course, and let's welcome all, all backgrounds, all scenarios, all situations. And be prepared for uh, getting a little bit uh, outside of our comfort zone. One final passage, turn over to Galatians Galatians chapter 6, we, if, you, if anyone is with, with us here this morning and you have responded to come and hear and be with us as we seek to draw close to the Lord, perhaps maybe there is that hesitant thought in your life, maybe thinking, oh, I, I, I see the truth and I, I see the hope and I see the encouragement and the scriptures and what Jesus has to offer, but Maybe hesitant, maybe, I don't know if I need to bring this baggage or bring whatever issues are in your life. I want to read a passage, I think, that hopefully will encourage you. Because this is how Paul taught to have the attitude towards anyone who has spiritual baggage, spiritual difficulties, spiritual problems. When they are coming to draw near to the gospel. And Paul says this in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. He says, Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, so that you too will not be tempted. And I can honestly say, and I consider it a blessing, that I believe that's the exact sentiment you will find in this congregation. Don't be... Uh, hesitant if you're feeling well maybe there's some things that uh, I, I don't know how I'm gonna, people respond to me I don't know how people will react to me it says when you're amongst spiritual trained individuals and that's what a blessing that we have spiritually trained brethren brothers and sisters in Christ in this congregation who understand how to hand that extend that arm that Jesus teaches us to do to remind anyone who has trouble that they are not a burden. You're not a burden. If anything, he says, consider it an honor for us to bear burdens. And, and would invite anyone who's with us, if you feel that weight of burden in your life, don't, don't hesitate. Take full advantage of the opportunity to be amongst individuals who are willing to bear your burdens. Willing to demonstrate that attitude of Christ. And that's what we are encouraged to do. 
It says in Galatians chapter 6, again, verse 1, Brethren, if any one of you is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone is with us who needs to respond to the gospel, also may be hesitant in, in whatever fashion, we encourage you, don't. Uh, you are amongst spiritual individuals who love the Lord, who love the gospel, who, as Paul said, considered an honor to bear burdens, knowing that it is helping others come to the Lord and helping their souls heal and helping them have that hope that one day we can all be together with him for all of eternity. So whatever the case is, whatever the situation is in your life, we encourage you come with all those burdens, with all that baggage. Won't you come and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? Won't you confess that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, repenting of your sins, being buried in baptism for forgiveness of your sins, and being able to care, cast all your anxieties and all your cares on the Lord? And we recognize that to care, cast all our anxieties on the Lord, to cast those anxieties on those who love the Lord. And we're here to help in any way that we can. And what a blessing that we can all do that with each other, for each other. But whatever the case is, don't delay, don't hesitate, don't, don't deny yourself the opportunity to be released and for you to be forgiven of sin. Once you come while we stand and sing the psalm of encouragement, once you obey the gospel, and let's help and encourage you any way we can while we stand and sing together. I hear thy welcome voice that calls me, Lord, to thee. For cleansing in thy precious blood that flowed on Calvary. I am coming, Lord, coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flowed on Calvary. Thou dost my vileness fully cleanse Till spotless all and pure I am coming, Lord Coming now to Thee Wash me, cleanse me have the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper now. Uh, the song for our minds is number 174. Christ arose. Ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Matthew 28, 5 and 6. We'll sing the uh, first three verses and then the chorus. First three verses and then the chorus. Lo, in the grave he lay, Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus, my
Jesus, my Savior, vainly they seal the dead. Jesus, my Lord, death cannot keep his prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. morning I'd like to read from Corinthians. It says, And when he had given thanks, he broke, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and ap also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this cup, bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on this bread which represents your son's body which was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We ask that we take, care, take part in it in a manner worthy and pleasing in your sight. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Also, before they partook of the cup, they uh, blessed it, gave thanks. So, well, at this time, we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer and give thanks before we partake of the fruit of the vine. Most righteous Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you and just so grateful and thankful that we can have this amazing confidence and hope 
that is made possible through your son Jesus. We truly are moved uh, with such amazing awe and, and gratitude to think of what Jesus went through when he suffered on the cross. Help us, Father, that our minds might be centered on that as we partake of this cup that represents his blood. Help us, Father, that we too might be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice in terms of our life and our commitment as we seek to honor you and live faithfully to you in this life. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Aside from our regular normal worship, we're asked to return a portion of what we have been blessed with, to return it to God for the use of our church. We ask nothing from our guests. It's just as God ordered us to return a portion of what we've been blessed with. And we ask this and we want to do everything that is right in his sight. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with, and we ask that you do, excuse me, we ask that uh, as we return a portion of this, which you have blessed us with, because all things belong to you, Lord, we ask this in Christ's precious name, amen. Amen.
Once again, we greatly appreciate your presence uh, as we worship today. We thank you for that. Uh, we meet once again this evening at 6.30, and then prior to that, 6.15, we'll have a little kids' trivia and sing prior to services this evening, which is always great. Um, we're going to have one final song, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer by Brother Nathan Marshall. Number 166, he loved me so, went to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, to him be the glory, Revelations 1, 5, and 6. So, why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He